All right, Alexander, let's talk about the massive news coming out of Germany, the uh, the massive scandal. Another scandal, I guess. Uh, you, you've done a video on this on your channel, and I think you're going to be actually uh, digging deeper into this. So we should probably expect more coverage from you um, as to what happened in uh, in Germany uh, with the CDU and with everything going on. Um, what a mess. This is kind of fitting. A fitting way for Angela Merkel to uh, to depart, isn't it? In scandal and uh, leaving her country and, and the European in, in tatters. It's kind of uh, fitting, if, if you ask me. Anyway, what do you make of what's going on? Absolutely. Now, let's talk about the scandal first. I mean, the scandals relate to uh, the fact that various German MPs, all of them aligned with... Angela Merkel's party, the CDU, CSU, appear to have been using the pandemic in order to enrich themselves by directing contracts to various companies that they are connected to. And um, they, two of them have now been forced to resign. And now a third has been identified. Um, there's uh, um, legal action being taken, by the way, also against one. So this has all reinforced a sense of the CDU, CSU, um, the uh, combine, the political combine of two parties, it's referred to, by the way, in Germany as the Union, which um, has dominated German politics, basically with some intervals since the Second World War, but um, which has now become very identified with Angela Merkel, that this is now in a state of decline and decay. And of course, it's that has now been reinforced strongly by the electoral results that took place over the weekend in two German states. Rheinland uh, Pfalz, which, by the way, is a state I know extremely well. I'm a regular visitor there. Uh, I have family connections in Rheinland Pfalz. And Mainz, in particular, is a city I know particularly well. That's the capital of Rheinland Pfalz. And Baden Wurttemberg. Now, Baden-Württemberg and Rheinland-Pfalz used to be absolutely rock-solid CDU territory. Baden-Württemberg is a largely rural state, but it includes the industrial and economic powerhouse of Stuttgart, where Porsche and Mercedes-Benz and Bosch are all based, all these famous companies, and it consistently voted for the CDU in pretty much every election from the Second World War right up until 2011, when the uh, Green Party won following the Fukushima nuclear power, nuclear power station um, accident in Japan. Um, and since then, the Greens have been, in, have been in power there in coalition with the CDU. But the CDU was hoping that it might get Baden-Württemberg back at some point. In fact, it is still slipping. It is losing ground. It's now polling below 30% uh, of the vote. And Rheinland-Pfalz, this other big West German state, West German Lander, it includes, as I said, places like ta the towns of Mainz and Worms. It's the major, one of the major wine growing regions of Germany. It's, includes the a region called the Rheingau. It's the place where, you know, you see all the famous fairy tale castles along the Rhine. Again, a very, very conservative place for much of its uh, a political existence since the Second World War. Um, it was dominated by the CDU between the, the end of the war in 1991. Helmut Kohl was the minister president president there between 1969 and 1976 and now it's controlled by the, the SPD and again in Rheinland-Pfalz there was an election on Sunday and the uh, CDU fell back even further. They're polling in the mid-20s in both of these states which once they dominated and that emphasizes and underlines again that we see a party in decline and i think the reasons for this are not hard to look for firstly the cdu has been in power for a long time and that tends to make parties complacent 
but also the CDU under Merkel has la- lost definition. Instead of being, you know, a conservative, small C conservative, right wing party, it's become this centrist party that tilts sometimes to the left, tilts sometimes to the right doesn't have an ideology, doesn't really have a purpose anymore, other than to be in power all the time. And that is, of course, the epitome of Merkelism and of Merkel's policies. She's not in power because she has any particular vision for Germany. She is in power because she wants to be in power. And that means playing this kind of politics and at the same time pursuing the agenda of whichever is the strongest party, the strongest force, which in Germany, for most of the time that she's been its leader, has been the integrationist globalist elite that has wanted Germany to become ever more closely integrated within the European Union, ever more committed to uh, um, providing financial and economic support to the EU project, accepting euro bonds and things like that, which were once completely unacceptable to Germans and which the Germans were told when the euro was set up would never happen. Well, they're starting to happen. All of that, accepting ideas about immigration, again, which would once have been unacceptable to Germans, to the German people. And all of this is happening because Angela Merkel always takes the side of power and has been the loyal servant of that power and at the same time has no vision for Germany, hasn't taken any steps to prepare Germany for the future. And she is about to leave in September Her party is looking in increasingly bad shape. And unfortunately, there is no clear alternative to her. So what is happening, I think, is that with Merkel going, the person who has both weakened the political system in Germany, but who has at the same time provided it with its one point of stability, is going to depart the scene fairly soon. And there is no real confidence or certainty about what is happening next. And you're absolutely right. The way this decay is taking place is both a fitting end of Angela Merkel's long rule, but it is also a consequence of it. So who uh, who does? You said there's no one, no one party that can come and fill the void, but. Who's going to fill it then? I mean, are we looking at we're looking at a coalition of parties? Uh, yes. Whatever happened to the AfD? There was a time where they were on the yeah. rise. They were the party yeah. to uh, to. I don't want to say to beat. They were they were the upstart. They yeah. were the upstart party. They were the rising party. They were yes. the party that uh, addressed many of uh, of the German public's uh, frustration. With uh, with Merkel yes. and with uh, with the CDU, what happened to to Afde? Are they still uh, are they still on the ascendance, or, or have they leveled off? What's what's going on with them as well? And I can't because I can't think of, of other maybe the Greens, right. but I can't think of any other parties that uh, made as much of an impact on Germany during Merkel's uh, tenure as the Afde. That's right. We, no, let's talk about the IFD. Because the IFD is, in fact, the official opposition. It sounds extraordinary to say this, but in the Bundeswehr, they are the official opposition to Merkel's government, which is this grand coalition of the SPD and the CDU, Merkel's uh, uh, Merkel's party. Um, But unfortunately, the IFD came to this position unprepared, steeply factionalised. Its members have quarrelled with each other. There's... many divisions about what sort of direction they want to take. And given the extraordinary pressures that the German political establishment places on a party like the IFD, I'm afraid quarrelling amongst themselves was about the worst mistake they could possibly have made. Instead of uniting and focusing on challenging Merkel's party, They've never really sorted out what kind of party they actually are. My impression is that the IFD is still an extremely powerful force in the states that 
made it make up what was once the former East Germany. It's still very much in the ascendant there. But in Western Germany, in the former Federal Republic of West Germany, where, uh, the country of West Germany, uh, um, where it was also at one time making a serious breakthrough. I mean, it's not just leveled off in these two regional elections, it's actually lost ground. Um, it's still a force, it's still um, able to win around 10%, a bit less than that, uh, just under 10% of the vote in these two states. But it is not rising uh, uh, in and challenging the German political establishment as it once seemed that it might do. Instead, what we're getting is a rearrangement, uh, like a kaleidoscope of the German political system but without any coherent centre. So what will happen um, after the elections in September 2021 is we could conceivably see the CDU soldiering on, this time in coalition perhaps with the Greens, who are a problematic party in themselves. I mean, they're not a party with, in my opinion, very many real ideas about how to take Germany forward because Essentially, they're still very much a party focused on ecological issues, but we could still we could conceivably see that, which would be in a way a continuation of Merkelism and of Merkel's stagnation. There is now an alternative being talked about, which is of a new government being formed in September, uh, without the Greek, without the CDU, led possibly by the Greens but including the C the SPD and including also the F FP FDP, which is Germany's uh, um, um, liberal party. It's the sort of pro-business party in Germany. The problem with that idea is that I don't think this government, if it was ever formed, the government of the Greens, the SPD and the FP FDP, would be very stable or very successful because all of these three parties would be pulling in completely different directions. So, for example, the Greens oppose Nord Stream 2 because they're opposed, they, don't, they don't like Russia. They uh, don't want to see um, carbon-based, fossil fuel-based energy coming to Germany. They're all into wind farms and solar power and things like that. The SPD is completely committed to Nord Stream 2 and it's not frankly, it's, it's wants to improve relations with Russia and it's not quite so hostile to fossil fuels. The FDP is a pro-business party. They will not want to see, presumably, ecological taxes on German business. So how does this really cohere? How does it work? And what we could end up with is with Merkel gone, we could have a political system in Germany which is increasingly unstable with no single party able to form a government in the way that historically the SPD and the CDU once did. Uh, no clear sense of direction. Unstable, weak chancellors, unable to make clear decisions all at a time when Germany needs strong leadership to take the country forward and to respond to the major structural problems that Germany faces and which are getting worse all the time. And also, of course, a weak Germany at the centre of an ever weaker Europe. So it's not really a very good or satisfactory uh, uh, way looking forward. If I can make an example, I mean, it's a little bit like Brezhnev. You know, Merkel, I've often compared Merkel with Brezhnev. Brezhnev, like Merkel, a great force of stagnation, which weakened the Soviet Union because it meant that problems were steadily accumulating and were not being uh, resolved and dealt with. But at the same time, Brezhnev provided a kind of point of stability. When Brezhnev left the scene, whole situation simply fell apart 
because he was no longer there, in effect, to hold it together. And I think the Mer Merkel is the same, in the sense that Merkel has both weakened the system through the stagnation that she created, but without it, it's very easy to see how the political system in Germany could now start to unravel and fall apart, because with her gone, the one point of stability that's left in the system will have vanished. So it's, it's, not, a good, it's not a good outlook. Uh, if you want to go back further in German history, you could look at Metternich, who was the, the Austrian chancellor in the uh, 19th century, who again created a, you know extreme period of stagnation in Germany and Austria um, in the period after the Napoleonic Wars. And then when he left the scene, again, everything fell apart because he wasn't at the same time dealing with the accumulating problems that were weakening the whole system. So I, I think Germany faces very unstable times and that's not something we are used to um, at any point since the emergence of the German Federal Republic in the 1940s. Um, a, we've never seen stability of this sort in Germany uh, uh, of the kind that, we, that is now threatened. And of course, in that stability, it may be that new parties like the IFD, if it can get itself together, might start to emerge as a, as a potential political force. Right. Hmm. Uh, a, weakened, uh, a weakening Germany uh, a weakening, uh, without a leader, a weakened uh, European Union with perhaps the worst leaders you could possibly pick out of, a, out of a lineup. I mean, complete incompetence all around, from the ECB to van der Leyen to Michel to uh, Borrell, all these guys, one worse than the next. Uh, a Europe that's, uh, that completely bungled the, uh, the lockdown and the coup. Um, a, a France with, with a Macron that's, that's completely lost. Uh, Brexit and the UK out, Italy's in tatters, Spain, Spain is in tatters, Greece is, is up to the hilt in debt, and then some. Uh, the, the whole thing is, is completely unraveling. And, yeah. uh, you know, all I could say yeah. is that if we had responsible leadership somewhere in Europe, someone would just pull all these people together and say, you know what, guys, we need to kind of wind this thing down and, uh, and kind of, you know, uh, end this thing while the, the, it was a good run while we yeah. had it, but we need to, you know, kind of end this uh, European experiment. Anyway, that's 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 how I'm seeing it. The outlook's Abs not good. Absolutely, all around. I, 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 absolutely, because the system rewards incompetence. I mean, this is the other. This is the paradox of it. I mean, it, it, it doesn't. It, the system doesn't want strong leaders with visions for taking their countries forward. So it, re it rewards incompetence. It rewards incompetence at the EU level, which is why you get people like Ursula von der Leyen and Stella Kyriakides and Christine Lagarde and all these awful people. And it also re rewards incompetence at the national level, which is why we have no real uh, uh, person coming forward to take over from Angela Merkel in Germany that you know anybody could have any possible confidence in because whenever anybody like that does appear to on the scene the entire system works to push them down we saw what we've seen that repeatedly in country after country and merkel herself you know assisted in that process she was in effect the living embodiment of the system she always picked weak personalities and weak leaders and sidelined, sidelined strong ones, both in the EU and within Germany itself. And so what you now have, politically speaking, is a desert where there is no one who is really strong and forceful enough and with vision to take Germany forward. Because if there had been anybody like that in Germany, Merkel would have made absolutely sure 
so that they were done away with, that they were pushed to the sidelines, because that is what she consistently did. She reproduced in Germany the system that existed throughout the throughout, exists throughout the European Union, of which, of course, she was also. I mean, she's also an architect of that system too. Merkelism is a, a reality in Germany. It's also a reality within the EU. And always remember that the globalist integrationist current, the movement, the people who support that, want it that way. They don't want strong leaders who might say no to them. The very last thing they want to see is someone with the force of personality of a Viktor Orban in charge in Berlin. I mean, that for them is the stuff of nightmares. So we're going to see progressive decline and decay unless and until there's a final break with this thing, of which at the moment there is no sign. It may be that once it gets, once it gets its act together, the IFD will achieve that. But it hasn't done so for the moment. All right. Big story. We'll continue to monitor it. Alexander McCurse, thank oh, you. Yeah. A big story yeah. and an, evol and an, an evolving yeah. one. And an evolving one. I mean, there are going to be more regional elections between now and the national elections in September in Germany. I believe there's six coming. And of course, it's always possible. There's still time for the IFD to get its act together. I would add there's also the other party to the left, which is Die Linke, which is also very based in Eastern Germany and which originated from the old East German Communist Party. Having said that, there are some really rather intelligent people in it, but it too has been divided and it too has failed to make a real electoral breakthrough. But conceivably, because it too is critical of the Merkel system, it, it might start posing a, a challenge from the left, just as the IFD starts to pose a challenge from the right. At the moment, that isn't happening, but there is still time. All right. All right, guys, go to the Durant shop, pick up some merchandise, maybe pick up a nice hoodie, nice sweatshirt like what Alexander is wearing, or a magic mug to boost your geopolitical IQ by thousands upon thousands of points. And also go to Alexander's channel. He'll be covering the German story uh, in depth as well, as well as the Durant channel. But Alexander will also be covering it as well on his channel. The link is down below. Check out my channel down below as well. Check out PayPal, Patreon, Subscribe Star, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Hex, Litecoin. We got all the coins in there. So, you know, anyone that uh, wants to help out the Durand, donate, I don't know, maybe 10, 20, 50, 100 Bitcoins. <laughs> that, would, <laughs> that would help us out a lot. Anyway, guys, hey, you know, there's some people that, that certainly have like, help us an awful lot. There's some people that have like 10,000 Bitcoins. So, you know, I don't know, maybe... Uh, Maybe uh, Mike, Mike, Michael Saylor, I think is the guy. Yeah, Michael Saylor is the guy. Maybe, you know, he, he may want to throw us a couple hundred Bitcoins. <laughs> anyway, all jokes Absolutely. aside. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> small, small change for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, what else? <laughs> PayPal, uh, PayPal Patreon subscribe. Sorry, I said that. Uh, BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble. And let's do a shout out to a new sponsor, Affirm, Affirm uh, Health Products which uh, are happy to offer our viewers a discount of 10% when you use the code Duran10 on checkout. I'll put a link to the site down below. Restore, refresh, renew your body with these products. Alexander, I am waiting on mine to come, but you have tried them and you said that it is nothing, I have indeed. nothing short of amazing. I'm on their website right now and viewers can probably see some of the, uh, the products that I have on the screen. Uh, skin Renew, Muscle Refresh, Restore Tincture, uh, what else, Transdermal Relief Pain Patches. I mean, just, it sounds it sounds awesome, so I can't wait to get mine and, uh, you know, improve my, my overall health yeah. and uh, restore, refresh, and renew myself. Duran 10, guys, at checkout. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, I should say to our viewers that I'm a person who um, is, is fairly stiff, 
you know, naturally rather a stiff person in terms of my physical well-being, and I get lots of aches and things as a result. And my and um, I have to use, I have to get myself massaged professionally quite regularly in order to cope with that. But anyway, I was having particular problems with some pains, and I uh, took used one of these products, this one specifically, which is a roller. And to my astonishment, the pain went almost at once. Quite amazing. It was quite... Ex can, quite can you hold it up a little bit more so people so, can see the packaging? I will hold it's it up really nice packaging see, you too. Can see the like, packaging. Beautiful. It's lovely packaging. Very elegant. Very, very beautiful packaging. And you see, you unscrew it and you can see it's, it's a roller thing. But there are, there are, it comes in other forms. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's drops that you can have. Uh, you can see how, what, how elegantly, again, it looks. Um, there's creams like this, like this, and um, there's patches. And as I said, my my own experience was really quite. I mean, it was it was it was miraculous. I mean, that's all I could say. And I've used it since, and with extraordinary effects. And um, I I have to say, you know, I'm, I I I speak from my own experience, obviously. But my experience has been overwhelmingly positive with these products. It's been, uh, they've been really wonderful. And uh, the label, you can see it there, it's a firm. And as Alex correctly said, as Alex said, you can find a link to their website underneath. And uh, there's a code you can use and it will get you discounts. And it's from the United States, but I believe they do ship international to most places, I believe they do ship. Um... Yes. But it will ship out of the, the United States, guys. And uh, and just look for the, yes. the discount code Duran10. That's it. And of course, the Duran shop. Don't forget the Duran shop, guys. <laughs> all right, take care. Of course, dude, absolutely. Yeah. Our famous magic mugs and all the wonderful products you will find there. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.